Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. We're outdoors enjoying the weather and getting ready to breathe a little life into this worn out light post. We're going to remove the light post, paint it, get it looking like new, as well as we're going to do a little bit with the landscaping here because it's all overground with weeds and kind of get the brick perimeter showing again. So it's a pretty quick little weekend project for you and I'll show you the few steps involved to get this project done. All right, first up, assuming the power is on to your light post, you'll want to apply some tape over the photo relay. This will give you the appearance of nighttime, so then the light will actually receive power. Find your circuit breaker and flip the switch, confirming that the light goes out with the tape on. Now you're ready to start to uninstall the light fixture. This is pretty simple. It's really just three screws that you'll need to remove and then you can, once those are removed, you can start to access the wiring that's underneath this cap. So with the use of a voltage tester, we'll also double check just to make sure we don't have any hot wires still within the Romex that's coming up through the pole if you're good to go. This is where you need to keep in mind, are you redoing this light fixture or are you just going to install a new one? If you're installing a new one, just remove it, don't take your time. If you're redoing it, obviously take your time. And that's the same with this post. Are you just removing this post? Um, if you are, then you can kind of be a little bit more rough with it and just get it out of the ground. Uh, and every installation is going to be different in terms of the post. Some are going to have a lot of quick concrete in there, some are not. Uh, this one's pretty easy to remove. So you'll get it out of the ground and then you'll need to remove and slide that Romex out of the post. All right, so now with the post removed, for the project when I started off, I was looking to reuse the, the lamp post here and just use some Rust-Oleum primer and then paint uh, black. So get that looking new. When I remove the post, you can see from the ground, these are pretty thin walled posts overall. So this thing's beat up. It's not ready for that second life. So I needed to get a new post. And this one's actually already been painted once. Uh, it was originally white, like another lamp post I needed to remove, uh, but then was painted brown. So I needed to get a new lamp post, not a big deal. These things are readily available. What I did is just went down to a local big box hardware store and got a three inch diameter standard 80 inch high lamp post with the cross member. And then also I went with the photo relay, a new photo relay. If your photo relay and your old lamp post, you think you can reuse it, you can purchase these without that. And you're gonna save yourself about $10. Whenever I'm doing projects like this, I'm already going to all the time and effort to get everything new. So that extra $10 for me for new hardware is, is well worth it. But that's up to you if you want to save some money. And then also, if you like your light fixture as it is now and you just need to repaint it, don't forget to actually disassemble, fully disassemble your light, clean it up, rough up the surface, prime it, and then paint it with a nice Rust-Oleum multiple uh, coats there. So it's really ready for that second life. Don't try to tape it off and then paint it. Just remove all the parts like you see here and that's gonna give you a much better base to start from. For us, we're gonna go ahead and inst install a new light just to match some of our other exterior lighting. And all in, the post and the light are about $90. So with a little bit more, like the quick crete you need for the hole, maybe some mulch, you're probably in uh, for about a hundred bucks. You can get a brand new uh, light post and will last you for years to come. Now, as you work to get your new post hole set, I'm, usually, I'm just using hand tools here. And do be careful every once in a while, you might find a little guy hanging out in your hole, especially depending on the season. So we'll set him off to the side and get back to work. I'm just using hand tools though, because, and why that is. 
there's some concrete still in the hole and I want to get, I do not want to damage that Romex cable. I don't want to make this job harder than it is. So I need to find the end of that wire and then get that off to the side before I start really digging out my post hole. So just using a standard pulse hole digger and then also this kind of spike which has the tamping tool and then a, a small point on the one end. So I'm gonna dig down lower than the recommended 18 inches. And that's because I wanna put a little bit more base rock at the bottom. So I'm digging down about 22 inches, 23 inches, give or take. You don't wanna to go too low where that will affect the height of your post. The recommendation on this type of post is 18 inches. The bottom six inches being rock, just establishing a base, and then a foot uh, for concrete mix, or also called quickcrete. So now I'm just putting the rock in, tamping that down with a small little sledgehammer, measuring it out. Again, I'm trying to get close to about a foot. I get to about 14 inches, so my post is a little lower. And then I'll put a little concrete mix or quickcrete on top of that before setting the post. So just getting that compacted in. Before you set the post, you need to get your Romex wire back through that side hole. When you set your post, there are a few things you want to look at. One, where is the photoelectric hole at the top? And then there's a cross member, two holes. Those two holes you want to be parallel with the road so that cross member runs the same direction as your street. So when you get it set where you want it, now you can start putting a little bit more concrete around the pole. Here I really just use about a whole bag of the concrete and that's going to matter on the diameter of your hole. Because then what you'll do is you'll start to work and get this pole plumb. And this is something that you're going to go back and forth with. And you'll, I add the water in two stages. So it's about two quarts of water that add to a bag of concrete mix. So I'll add one quart and kind of get the post set in there, start to get it where I want left to right and front to back, and then add the rest of the concrete mix in along with the rest of the water. And then I'll do, and then once that's kind of soaked into the concrete mix, the water soaked in, I'll go ahead and do final adjustments and then I'll just let it sit. Go ahead and check your bag of quickrete that you have. Here I'm gonna let it set for at least two hours. And don't forget, if you get concrete on any of your tools, make sure to wash those off so you don't have concrete on them long term. This little torpedo level that I'm using, I'm just going to check it one last time. Remember, all the supplies and tools used, look down in the description. You guys will see exactly what I'm using on this project, just to give you a little bit more direction. But overall, left to right, front to back, this is looking pretty good, so I'm just going to let it sit. Okay, so before I head out to the light post, I was just going to do some prep work here on the light fixture itself and what I can do with this photo cell. So the photo cell does come with a connector. So I took that connector off because there is a few connections that I can make here before heading out. Now you are going to get common wire nuts with this kit. For some new homeowners and people that are kind of tackling this for the first time, those are a little bit intimidating and sometimes you can think you have a good tight uh, fit and bond between the two wires, but you actually don't. So there are, there are new connectors here which are more of a push type connector coming in two wires, three wires, and you can get uh, additional ones as well. So that is what I'm going to use for this just in case that uh, would be more to your comfort level or your liking. So what can we do here before we head out? Let's look at the light fixture. So light fixture has the ground. The ground is going to the, go to the ground in the Romex wire out at the light post. So we cannot do anything with this. Here is the hot side, the black wire coming from light fixture. 
that is actually going to connect to the red wire or the switched hot side from the photo cell. So we can bring those two together here in the connector before we go out. So I'll go ahead and these are already twisted. These are uh, braided wires, so they're already twisted and ready to go. The nice thing about these is you can actually see that you have the wire completely in and you have good contact. Okay, so the other thing that we could do, because this hot side from the photocell is actually going to go into the hot side out at the post, so we can't do anything with that yet, but here we do have the neutral. So neutrals, I'm going to need to bring these two neutrals together and then also the neutral out at the light post. So I have a three spot connector here. Okay, so I'm pushing those two in these the two open slots and then I'll have one more for the neutral coming from the Romex. So that is basically the prep work I can do here. So other than that, depending on which kit you get, you might have a small little gasket here. Uh, that is actually, it, it is, has adhesive on the one side. So you need to take the paper off and then you do need to apply it to the inside of the photo cell. And just kind of press it around and get a good Fit. Okay, so now I'm going to head out to the post. I got the photo cell. I have my light fixture. You're usually going to have three mounting screws for the fixture itself, and then the photo cell will have the two the two mounting screws. So bring that with you. A few tools that you'll need. Uh, you do need to start the holes in the uh, post. So. I am using a 760 force drill bit, and that matches up pretty well with this screw here, which will give it a nice pilot hole. And then also, this is why you want that post to be secure, because you're going to fit these screws, and you're gonna to have to press a put a little pressure while you're screwing it in, and if that post isn't secure, you're gonna put it, you're gonna make it now so your post is not all plumb, uh, and all the work that you did to get it ready is is going to be kind of shot in the foot. So I'm going to head out to the post now and, and wire this, this guy up. I'll start off by mounting the photo relay. And you guys might be like, what is the change of scenery? I'm actually doing two of these posts. So this one's in the backyard and it's been setting for longer. So I'm ready to start to mount the light fixture. So just mounting the two screws here to get the photo relay set in. And then I'll start wiring the fixture. If you don't have an extra set of hands, you're probably going to want something like this ladder to hold the light fixture while you're wiring it and just to make it easier. Using those push pin connectors makes it a lot easier as well. And then what you'll get is you'll see the connection on the connector there for the photo relay and then the red wire from the photo relay to the black of the light fixture, the black of the photo relay to the black of the Romex all the neutrals coming together, and then the grounds, the ground from the light fixture to the Romex. Now I would recommend before you mount the light fixture to test it. So turn your power back on and then put your tape over your photo relay to confirm that the light, the light goes on. If it does, now we're good to go. So turn your power back off and let's mount this fixture. Keeping the top part of the light fixture off, we'll use the torpedo level to check and see from left to right, front to back, if everything's level. Once you get that first hole lined up, I take a 760 force drill bit and I drill a hole through the light post. Go easy on drilling this. Remember the Romex and the wires are just on the other side, so you don't want to go crazy and drill through and then damage the wires. Now once you get that first screw set, now you kind of work back and forth for the second one, and I'm marking the holes with the screw before I start drilling, and then that also will help that drill bit find the hole. So we'll get the second one set here, 
and then do the third. I still need to pull that backside down a little bit to get everything looking good, but you can see when I pull the top down, be careful, I'm actually bending the, the fixture. I'm not actually moving the base. You, you need to move the base to get everything lined up. So I'm drilling down slightly to try, when I screw it in, try to pull that base down a bit to get everything uh, centered up. And the end result, you can see the bubble there, not perfect, but pretty much in the center for both directions if I get off that screw there and lie flat. So it's looking good. All right, just finished up the project. Overall, uh, it took about a half day. I split it up. What I did is got the post out uh, one day and then later in the afternoon, got everything set, put the quick creed in, and then just let that set overnight. Checked it a few times just to make sure everything was still uh, plumb and and nothing had shifted over time. Then once it was really set up, I came back out because you want to be careful drilling into the post if it's not secure or you will uh, you will adjust it while you're just trying to mount the light fixture. If you have any questions on the products I use, just look down in the descriptions. I'll put a link to all the different products I use so you're clear on what exactly all went into this project. If you like these sort of videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a like as we put out new videos like this on a weekly basis, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.